Good morning children. I welcome you all to the class of statistics. Till now you have completed three chapters of statistics and by now you must be familiar with the definition of statistics, the method of collection of data and the different sources of collection of data. Now we move to the fourth chapter that is frequency distribution. Now before starting the fourth chapter I would like to make it clear with you what is meant by statistics in brief. Now statistics as you have learnt earlier that can be defined in two senses in the plural sense and in the singular sense. In the singular sense statistics means the collection of data, the organization of data, the presentation of data and the interpretation of data. These are four things collection, organization, presentation and interpretation of data in the singular sense. Whereas in the plural sense statistics is the collection of aggregate of numerical data. What do you mean by aggregate of numerical data? As you have learnt earlier single figure does not mean statistics or single data does not denote statistics. Can you tell why? The reason is suppose you state that person A or you say that Ram has scored 50 marks in English. Does it mean statistics? Though it is a numerical data or numerical figure but it won't be called statistics because a single figure is not capable for any type of comparison. You cannot compare the marks of one student with anybody until and unless you quote the marks of different other students also who are appearing in the same exam. So in the plural sense statistics means aggregate of facts whereas in the singular sense statistics means collection, organization, presentation and interpretation of data. Now let us move to the chapter frequency distribution. Here as it, this shows four steps this is clear that first one is collection of data this is the first step in statistics. First we collect the data according to our purpose of inquiry. Now purpose of inquiry has to be very clear before collecting a data. Suppose you want to do the survey of a particular locality. You want to know that how many people are educated in a particular locality or how many are uneducated. Similarly your purpose of inquiry may be that how many are male and how many are female living in a particular society. So this purpose of inquiry should be clear in your mind and according to the purpose of inquiry the data is collected. So this is called collection of data and in the previous chapters you have studied about different methods of collecting data so I need not repeat it here. So we move to the second point that is organization of data. What is meant by organization of data? The collected data itself has no meaning until and unless it is organized in a proper form. If you don't organize the data you just collect the data regarding the number of males and number of females living in a society. That won't solve your purpose until and unless you specify that how many are living in a particular area or you can say uh, you have to categorize that uh, according to age group you can categorize or according to the income group you can categorize number of males and females living in different society then you can say that this particular society have this type of people living or you can say whether rich are there or poor are there or this way you can just specify the collected data in a more descriptive manner and collected data it is in a raw form it is an unorganized data it is just like a lump of clay which has no shape it, and it, it is very necessary to organize the data for meaningful statistical investigation. Now let us come to this point what is meant by organization of data. When we say that collected data has to be organized then it should be clear in your mind what is meant by organization of data. 
As it says, organization of data is a process in which collected data are organized for comparison and for the analysis. Now here certain points are this collected data are organized for comparison and for the analysis. So the data is organized in a proper systematic manner. Why it is organized? For comparison and for further statistical analysis. Because if you don't organize the data, you cannot make any statistical analysis or comparison of according to your purpose of inquiry. So collected data has to be organized for comparison and for the statistical analysis. Now we come to the another form. This is the classification of data. Now first step in the organization of data is classification of data. How do you organize the data? Organizing the data is not an easy job because if you take it that in your locality they are living only 20 children or they are you are making a survey of only 50 people then it is comparatively easier but if you are making the survey of or you're collecting the data of 2000 people or 5000 people then in that case until unless you classify the data in a simple form you cannot carry on with your statistical analysis so classification is the first step in organization of data. Now what is classification? Classification is the process by which collected data are put into different classes. Now what do you mean by classes here? Classes means that you divide the data into different groups or categories on the basis of their qualities and attributes. What do you mean by qualities and attributes? That means on the basis of their characteristics. That may be you are dividing, a, suppose there is a class in which there are 40 students. You can divide the students on the basis of their age or you can divide the students on the basis of their height or you can divide the students on the basis of subjects they have offered or you can divide the students according to the marks they have obtained. Similarly, in, if you are doing the survey in a factory, then you can divide the workers on the basis of how many are skilled, how many are unskilled. In the educated group, you can divide the workers into how many are highly educated or how many are less educated. So in this way, the classification of data according to their qualities or attributes, that is known as classification or the process of classification. That is the collected data are put into different classes on the basis of their qualities or attributes. Now, after classification, now this part, I think this is clear to you. First is collection, then organization. Now this presentation interpretation, we are not taking it now because this you will be doing in later chapters. We are concerned here mainly about organization of data and frequency distribution because organization is date of data is done with the help of table or frequency distribution. So this presentation interpretation we will do later. Now we will come to this only classification organization and first we will take what is the use of classification of data or how classification of data is considered very important for statistical analysis. Now coming to the importance, first one is classif classification present statistics in a very simple form. When you classify the data, then the data which is a complex one can be presented in a very simple form and it can be easily understandable by the people or it can be used for statistical analysis because then it becomes a comprehensive form of data. Now how do we simplify it. Another example I can take that suppose there are students, 40 students in a class. Now it is very difficult to learn the marks of all 40 students appeared in the final exam. You can divide the children or students 
in three categories. That means students scoring between 40 to 50 marks, another category may be 50 to 60, another is 60 and above. That means you are dividing the group of 40 students into three categories, first div division, second division and third division. And then it becomes easier for you to remember, suppose 10 children have scored above 60, 20 children have scored between 50 to 60 and rest 10 children have scored less than 50 or between 40 to 50, then you can say that one fourth of children are above 60 percent marks and another one fourth is below 50 percent that is in the third division. This way, way the whole group of 40 students can be denoted in the form of three divisions for second and third and then it makes easier comparison between the, the marks of all 40 students. So this way you can say that classification makes the distribution of data simpler. Okay, this is first function of classification. Now we come to the second one. Classification also helps in diagrammatic presentation of statistics. What do we mean by this? The table or the data what you have gathered. If you present the table or data in a series form then it is not that easy to understand as it is easy and interesting to understand the data in the form of diagrams or you can say graphs. You must have seen that in the magazines or newspaper also the rainfall distribution is shown with the help of bar graph. Now this makes it easy for a person to understand that in which area there is high rainfall, in which area there is less rainfall just looking at the diagram and at a glance you can make out that where the rainfall is more or where, where it is less instead of looking at the figures. So this way classification of data makes the presentation of statistics very interesting in the form of diagram or graph. The data can be presented in the form of multiple bar diagram or in the form of percentage bar diagram or in the form of pie chart or in the form of map. So this type of presentation of data is interesting to understand and easy to make the comparison. Okay, now we come to the third function of classification of data. Now third is it, uh, this classification help in making comparisons. Now how do it help in making comparisons? Let me make it clear to you. Now suppose there are two sections in your school, section A and section B. Now this again we can divide it into three categories, children scoring more between 40 to 50 percent marks, then 50 to 60 and 60 and above. Now in suppose in section A, five children are in this category, then in this second one there are 10 children and in this 60 and above there are suppose you can say 15 children. Now in another section, this is section B. Now in this section between 40 to 50 suppose there are 10, then 50 to 60 there are 5 and 60 and above there are only uh, this is Uh, 15, right? That makes total 30 and this makes 30. Now here you can compare that 60 and above in both the section that is same. But in section A, more number of students are getting marks in the category of 50 to 60, whereas section B, there are only 5. And in 40 to 50, here 5, it is only, here there are 
10. This means on an average this section is having more percentage of marks or more number of students in the category of 40 to 50. This shows that comparing to section B, section A has brighter children. So this way comparison can be made with the help of classification of data and dividing the data into different categories. Now another function of classification of data is classification makes data more attractive and effective. Now another example I'll take here. Suppose in a class total number of students are 150. Out of these boys are 70, girls are 80. Right? Now all 70 boys they are having different two choices arts and science. Same way girls are opting arts and science. Now here out of 70 suppose 30 are opting arts and 40 are opting science. Here out of boys 40 are in the girl section 40 are opting arts and 40 are opting science. Now what is the total here? Total of boys and girls will be here total 70 boys this way arts and science in the boys 30 have opt art and 40 are for science and here 40 for arts 40 for science this makes total of 70 and here 80 so this makes the description of number of students opting two streams more clear and this shows that total the 70 boys have opted art and 80 have opted for science. So this way comparison can be made with the help of classification of data and this makes effective and attractive description of data. Now after this, after understanding the meaning of classification and organization of data, after knowing the importance of data classification, we come to the next heading or next part of the chapter that is what are the methods of classification. Now we come to the methods of classification out of this we can say that there are four methods of classification of data. What are these four methods? Methods of classification. There are four methods. One, two, three and four. Now first one is known as geographical classification. Geographical classification. Second is chronological classification. Third is quantitative classification. And the fourth one is qualitative classification. 
Now let us take these four in detail. What is meant by geographical classification? As the word denotes, geography, you know, that is a science of earth, a science related to the description of earth. Now geographical classification means when you are classifying the data on the basis of locational or geographical differences. For example, suppose you are stating the data in which you are giving the description about cultivation of wheat in different states in India. Then you are stating that what is the production of wheat in Punjab. This is states and the here production of wheat in million tons. In million tons. Now Punjab, second you are taking suppose